Why is the new 7200 better in every way? Why is it more versatile than the original? And why might you want it even if you don't want a 7200? You can see how close I am right now to the steering wheel. We're at 70. I'm gonna go all the way in to 200 and it's still in focus. So this is the new one, the Mark II, and this is the old one. Now this is actually nine years old at the time of making this video, but does that mean this is a bad lens? No. I still use this all the time at weddings, for my ceremony shot, for reception speeches. It's still a very solid lens. But am I looking at picking this one up now? I wasn't, but after using it, I definitely want it now. And here's why. So yes, this is smaller, but hold that thought. Yes, this now works with the teleconverters, so you can get more reach out of this, something you couldn't do with the old one. Yes, this still has OSS, something I loved about the old one. This is 200 millimeters handheld. That's pretty good. Design-wise, it's not hugely different from the original, but it just feels a bit more refined. This one actually has a lock now at 70 mil, so you can lock it, and it's got a very satisfying click to it. Yes, it's sharper in the middle and at the corners. Seriously, look how sharp these images are. I've got lots more examples to show you later, but it's kind of wild. How's the focus breathing? The focus breathing is almost non-existent. This is at 200 mil. Let's go to 70 mil. This is at 70 mil. Look at the corners, look at the edges. It's really good. How's the autofocus? This is at 70 mil here, set to the fastest settings with the A7R5. It's tracking me just fine. What about if we go into macro mode? This is super close at 200 mil. Nobody wants to see that. Obviously had to test this in the real world, so I shot a wedding ceremony with it. Zero issues, it did everything I needed it to do. But as I said earlier, I still use this at weddings and I don't ever have issues with it either. Is it par focal? I've actually got it focused right here where it says ST10. We're at 70 right now, and if I zoom in, it's manually focused, so it won't change. If I zoom in, you'll see it's slightly out of focus, so it's not bad, but it definitely is not par focal. One, two, three buttons on the barrel. Yes, it has literally all the buttons and switches you could possibly want, including this one, because yes, it is in fact a macro lens as well. Old one was not a macro. And that's what's exciting and fun about using this lens and what really changed my mind about wanting it, because it kind of opens this door to a world that you might not have ever seen before. I had never experienced it anyway. Macro at 200 mil. Some of the shots and the video you can get it's just wild. I was literally walking around trying to find bugs and things I could just zoom in really close to. Now I was manually focusing and using the focus magnifier to make it a little bit easier, but you could use autofocus. It worked okay as well. There's this one shot I got of a spider web that had little droplets of water in it. And you can zoom right into the droplet of water and see the reflection of the whole garden. I've never seen that before, at least like from photos I've taken. I've seen people do those kinds of things, but when you try it out, it's fun. Minimum focus distance on the old one there. One meter to 1.5 meters, depending on if you're at 70 or 200. On the new one, 0.26 meters to 0.42 meters if you're at 70 or 200. You can get so close to things when you're shooting with this. Now when shooting macro, I realize you need to turn off stabilization. You need to go to a higher aperture, like right now I'm at F8, and you obviously manually focus. And uh, this is an 8K, so this is at 70 mil. And then this is zoomed all the way in to 200 there. Again, how close I am to this flower, and it's in focus at 200 mil. Now earlier I said about the size and to hold that thought, because when you put them side by side, this is the new one, it's a lot smaller, which is impressive. Until you actually zoom in, because the barrel extends on this one. The barrel doesn't extend on the original, and it makes it a lot bigger. And when I first saw this, my first thoughts, don't love a barrel that extends. Now, sitting on it for a little bit and thinking about it, it does make sense with the roadmap and the way that things are going these days. I'm not saying I love it still, but it just makes sense. Every time I need to bring a 7200 with me, it's a active decision that I have to make in terms of what I'm actually bringing and what can I now not bring, because this is a big lens. When things go into a bag, this takes up a decent amount of space. So if you can reduce the size of this lens, it means you can put more things in a bag. Now, yes, it's not a huge amount, but if you have a camera bag and you're packing it and you're going somewhere, you know what I mean by every little tiny piece of space counts. Because this is all internal, it doesn't matter if it's at 70 or at 200, the size stays the same. This obviously gets bigger when you're using it at 200, but when I'm not using it and it's in my bag, it may as well be the smallest it can be because I don't need it to be at 200. You know what I'm trying to say? It just, it makes sense when you're traveling to have a smaller lens and then extend the barrel when you need it, even if I don't like how that looks. Now also with the size, 
for this, Sony did mention that it was a design choice. It could have been smaller, but they wanted it to be compatible with the teleconverter, which makes this a way more versatile lens. The first Gen 1 was not compatible with that, and it was one of the big things that made me kind of want the f 2.8 G Master, but I just never really jumped on it because it wasn't enough of a reason. This means you can now use the teleconverter with it. So if you wanted to grab a teleconverter with this, the 2X one, the 200 mil becomes a 400 mil. And if you pop that into crop mode, you get the equivalent look of a 600 mil lens out of this now, which makes this a very versatile lens, which also kind of ties in with my next point is that I can't be the only one that thinks a 7200 just isn't that exciting. It's a very specific lens that has a very specific purpose and you only really bring it when you need a 7200. It's not like when you bring a 1635 or a 2470, those are very versatile lenses for everyday use. You could just bring them and shoot whatever you want with them. With this being smaller, being compatible with the teleconverters and it being a macro, it's just now a way more versatile lens. It has way more of a purpose and it can justify itself in your bag way more than the original one could and I'll leave it at that. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.